everyone. Thank you for joining our conversation with Karina. Today, Karina and I are joined by two of our colleagues, Richard Allchild, Senior Sales Manager, and Mark Mulligan, Operations Director. Welcome to both of you. When we launched our 12 commitments for 2021 earlier this year, recovery was at the top of our list. The phrase build back better has been discussed often within the IMAX team building our industry back, expanding our team and making it stronger, and most importantly for us right now, building back face-to-face. -face. As we travel down the road to Mandalay Bay, we're focused on purposeful recovery. But what does that mean to IMEX and to the industry? Karina, let's start with you. It's been a big year for the IMEX team. Could you talk a little bit about how we brought the idea of purposeful recovery to our day-to-day -day work? Yeah, I think obviously, you know, the whole industry has had um, a significant pause uh, for the IMEX team. I don't think it feels like a pause because we've been so busy with Planet IMEX and then now uh, this year focusing on rebuilding towards IMEX America in November, IMEX Frankfurt next April, and of course the digital activations that we've just launched, the IMEX Buzz Hub. So we haven't really paused in terms of the level of activity and work that we've been doing. But, but having the pause from the shows has allowed us to really think about everything that we do at the shows. And when we sort of restart looking at going back to live, in a way, it's quite freeing to say, well, how can we do things differently and better? I think we've always had a culture of re-looking at every element, you know, our debrief, we always went through the big through to the very small things to see what we could do better. But when you actually stop, it allows you to really think about that in a whole different way. I think the purposeful aspect is really a recognition of the fact that unless you really do think about it and put effort into it and are purposeful about that element, um, it doesn't just happen because it's too easy to just spin up what you've done before. And as event planners, I think in every aspect of what we do, whether we're looking at the flow of the show, whether we're looking at sustainability, whether we're looking at, um, you know, how our buyers and our exhibitors interact with each other, every element has to be thought through and, and, and we have to say, does that still work in the new environment? And in many places, we'll say, yeah, that, that worked before and it will work again. But in other areas, we can really take some time to think through how we do it better. And I think this pause has given us an opportunity to really delve deeper into some of the things we were talking about already, like need finding, and wayfinding, and different technologies. We won't have all the answers for November, but we'll be significantly further forward probably than we might have been um, without that pause. Absolutely. I think um, as a team, I feel like I've actually almost been in a show cycle consistently for the past year and a half, even though our shows have been very different to what live used to look like. So I definitely think we've tried to take this time and really learn and research and spend the time with our attendees to see really what they need, because I think something that's really important for us is that we're in the same exact position as all of the attendees to the show, whether they're suppliers or planners, we're literally doing exactly what they're doing every day. So it's been really interesting to kind of look at it from that side where we are all in this together. Yeah, totally. I totally agree with that. It's been, you know, suddenly we are a, a corporate planner, an association planner in a way that we weren't necessarily their direct peer for, uh, because we were very specifically a trade show organizer in the digital world all of that goes away so it, it has been um great actually because i think we understand them better and perhaps they understand us better absolutely and um, mark as our operations director you've been part of many wider industry conversations around what's next in safety and security which obviously is the top of everyone's mind right now how have you seen the industry come together for purposeful recovery yeah, I think it's been uh, quite remarkable, actually, the, the level of collaboration um, across the industry as we've been dealing with this, this pandemic. Um, earlier this year, we saw a trio of, of normally competitive fashion events uh, in Florida coming together to, um, to work together and to put on a successful show and, and show this industry that we can do it and we're ready. So. Um, you know, they've been very vocal and open of sharing their experiences and best practices for other organizers and associations for us to learn from. So I think that's a great example. 
Um, of course, the, the task forces and committees that um, already existed uh, have really taken a new focus, I think, around the COVID issue. Um, and we've learned a great deal from that. My team, the operations team, has, has joined many, many meetings, roundtables um, and committees uh, just to learn from each other. And it's been really, really valuable. And, and we've made some long lasting connections from it. And then I think um, the other thing that's been really interesting is we've made direct contact with other organizers. Um, so we're, we're talking now to several other organizers of US shows, Las Vegas shows, uh, so we can compare notes and we can talk about what challenges we're facing, which are the big decisions, which route are they taking, which route are we taking? Um, so it's really demonstrated how resilient and determined we are for this community to get back to business. It's really been a nice, a nice experience. Absolutely. I think um, to quote High School Musical, we're all in this together. And I think it's been incredible to see the collaboration that's happening in the industry. And I do think it really speaks to the commitment that we all have of getting global business events back on its feet as quickly as possible. So Richard, obviously you are on the ground as an as one member of our sales team. You are with our exhibitors, talking to our exhibitors every day. So can you talk a little bit about what they're going through right now and maybe share some examples of what they've been doing to build back better within their communities? Yeah, I mean, as, as Mark said, I believe, I mean, one of the lasting legacies of COVID will definitely be collaboration within the communities. So like in some destinations, communities, they completely rely on the travel and the meetings and events industry. So for example, in Los Cabos, 90% of their population rely on tourism. So what they've done is they've um, created a strong public private uh, collaboration between the hotels, airports, local health authorities. And what this has done is allowed everyone to provide like a higher standard of care and they've already allowed meetings to take place. They had a meeting of 700 people um, last month, and that's only been able to happen because of the collaboration um, between all of the stakeholders. I mean, before I mean, before COVID, many of the CVBs and their, and their communities were in conflict, either over, over tourism or funding, and it was mainly due to a lack of understanding between the stakeholders. So what COVID has done is allow these people to form strong relationships, and this will only benefit the, the community moving forward. And then I think one of the things that links everyone in our industry is their passion for the destination. And even in our hardest times, our industry is still looking to help those communities. So you've seen convention centers across the world becoming hospitals or COVID vaccination centers. And then you see like hotel chains like MGM donating 300,000 pounds of food, the Sands donating 2 million pieces of PPE in, in Las Vegas. So I just think all of those initiatives are going to leave a legacy long after COVID. It's so fantastic. And it's, it's just incredible to see those examples and to feel those examples of just really purposeful building back. And I think, you know, it, it raises the question, something that we're talking about a lot internally about kind of what's important to us and what do we need to move forward and, you know, in face-to-face -face live, live events. And I know Karina as a team, we're talking a lot right now about what we want to put back into the events after this pause. So what's at the top of the list for you right now? I think um, obviously, you know, safety and security uh, come come top of the list. But I think, you know, what we all have to do is really look at the events that we produce for IMEX. You know, we have large scale trade shows and look at the purpose of those events as well. And I think that's really important to focus on as we build back, because you need to ensure that uh, you really understand why it is your stakeholders are attending your event and what it is that they need to get out of it before you strip things back. For us, of course, business is at the heart of what we do, F bringing people together face to face to make business and peer to peer connections. Um, and so that is really sacrosanct for us. And we need to make sure that when people come back to our event, that they can get that business done in the way that they expect to, because that is why they invest their money, but also their time in the show. Um, obviously, we also look at things like sustainability, and that's always been at the heart of iMEX shows. And for us moving to a new venue this year, uh, it's been also um, something that we've focused on. 
the other thing I think that's really important for us all to remember is that we create experiences and we need to make sure that when we're building back our events, yes, we can do things in a certain way, we can keep people apart, we can do things in a very safe and secure way, but, but that could also be sterile. So how do we keep things safe and secure, but also provide the amazing experience and atmosphere that uh, people also come to our events for? And again, that's different depending on the event that you hold but I do think that it's really important to think about the experience you're creating and design that into your event so purposefully again des design that in or design that back in and don't forget about that element I think that's really important and finally I think the other thing that's been you know with building but it's been really highlighted in the last 18 months is diversity equity and inclusion and I think that's just so important again to really purposely fully think about how that ma can manifest itself, how you can really build that back into your event or, and into your organization and help your stakeholders, help your attendees, your exhibitors to really live that. I think that's going to be increasingly important um, to, to ensure that you are um, working to um, really expand the opportunities of your event and that's what it's, it, inclusion means to me it's really allowing that opportunity for everybody to take part equally and um, so I think that's also really important going forward. Absolutely I couldn't agree more and I, I loved that you touched on show experience because obviously at IMEX that is the most important thing for us in fact we've coined a term the IMEX experience um, which is one of our fantastic hashtags that we often use on site so Mark I know that that's something your team is really focused on right now Karina touched on it how we how we can plan a safe but not sterile event so what can people expect from our first live show in almost two years yeah two years wow I can I can hardly believe it um but I, I think I think the the uh, the big thing, of course, is that we're in a new a new venue uh, since the last show. Um, Mandalay Bay was super excited to welcome people to uh, to new surroundings. I mean, planning a convention against the backdrop of a, a shark reef and a and a beach resort, and of course, all the world class entertainment and hospitality that Mandalay Bay and MGM properties offer is is um is going to be really interesting and exciting, and we hope. Uh, our guests will enjoy it, of course. In, in terms of the, the show and, and the safety aspect, of course, um, we are working very hard right now to make sure that we address all of those um, COVID compliance matters. Uh, the big thing, or one of the big things, will be we are planning on a seamless arrival experience, uh, which means uh, guests will be asked to print their own badges at home, uh, bring them along to the show, collect their lanyard and uh, scan themselves into the show. So there's a very seamless, contactless experience as they arrive to the show. Um, clearly, we will distribute our main feature areas so that we don't uh, create any unnecessary crowding or queuing, um, and we'll add additional points of access to the show for the same, for the same reason. So I'm not going to spill the beans on some of the uh, show experience um, ideas that we're working on at the moment. That's maybe for another issue. But I can tell you one hot off the press is a new CSR activity. Uh, we're working with a company called KLH, um, who were going to be constructing a children's clubhouse live during the show days, uh, which will be donated to a, a needy family in the Las Vegas area after the show and we're inviting our attendees to participate in that build um, and, and maybe a photo opportunity um, during the show so do come along and help us with that it's it's a great um, it's a great uh, initiative and we're, we're proud to be a part of it so um, yeah come along to the show and um, you'll see some of the other show experience ideas that we've got in the making Thanks, Mark. That clubhouse sounds fantastic. Definitely include me. I will be signed up, ready to, to help with that build. That's definitely something you cannot do virtually. So um, it is definitely important to be there live. And, and talking about live and the value of live, which is obviously the most important thing to the IMEX team. You know, Richard, how are you articulating the value of live events in this, hate to use the term, new normal, especially after people have experienced the good and the bad of digital? 
Um, I mean, well, I believe if, if anything, the value of live events has increased over the last year, year and a bit. I mean, when you speak to your colleagues within the industry or your friends, the one thing they've missed the most is, is live events. Um, I mean, live events, they allow you to have that emotion, that shared experience that just can't be replicated online. Um, I mean, that's the reason why we all prefer to go to a music concert or to a sports event in live. I mean, you can watch the same thing at home, um, but it's just always better in person. And that's the same be it a conference or, or a trade show. Um, I just think in, in person shared experiences just help build relationships and trust between two people or a brand. Uh, and meeting a person face to face is still the best way to do business and to form relationships. I mean, I think you, you can see, I mean, we've seen a massive shift to video conferencing because it gives you more benefits of face to face. So it's not quite there, but it's more. So we've all moved away from telephone calls to face to face over this time. But then when you know, live events and travel comes back, I see everyone moving, moving back to and to face to face just because it's because those connections that, that you can make it. And um, it's just better, better in that way. And I always look at it, you know, millions of people watch the Super Bowl on TV every year, but give one of those people a ticket to the game and we all know where they'd rather be. I love it. That makes so much sense. And I, I couldn't agree with that more. But, you know, obviously, as a business, we've tried to pivot to digital and I think we've done a great job. Um, but I know something that a lot of people have been talking about recently, Karina, is, is how to make sure that you're maintaining brand trust digitally. How do you kind of ensure that you're, you're sharing your culture, which is obviously so important to IMAX and something we're really good at live, but how has IMAX been able to sort of maintain that in this new digital world? Yeah, I think it's a great question and it's because it's so different and brand trust is um, such a sort of ethereal concept, really, you know, what, what is it? But I think it's about consistency, continuity and congruence with your values. I think that's the key thing. So for us, when we created Planet IMEX, we did that, you know, we, we did that as a gift to the industry. And our so our, our sort of right at the core of that was a gift to the industry and creating joy for the industry and so for that it was about being congruent through the experience with those values which align to our values at the show which is about all you know our mission our vision is all about advancing growing the business events industry and so I think um or digital in particular, you've got to really understand what your purpose is and really try to build your digital experience that really fits with that. Um, and so everything from, you know, the IMEX run that we also do on site to the, the way we delivered the brand experience, the quality of the programming and the experience. So all of these things sort of underpin the values that we already hold and that we have in our live in-person trade shows. So I think that's what's really important. And as we've planned forward for this year and we've really looked at what can we do as IMEX in the digital world? And we've said, actually, what we what we think that we can do is build human connections. So, yes, the educational element is important because that is obviously brings people to the events. Um, it, it gives people value digitally. But what we're really aiming to do is help people from across the world connect with each other in the digital world until they can connect in person at IMEX America and then IMEX in Frankfurt. And so it's it's challenging actually because in the digital world you can do anything and so it's been really important for us to keep coming back to that and going yeah we won't do that actually saying no to things because it doesn't fit with that sort of strategic purpose that we've decided is where we're going to try to place ourselves through this experience so that I think is how you build trust and um, and the other um, important element is being clear about that to your sponsors, um, to the suppliers who might be funding some of that, being very clear about what you can guarantee and what you can't. And again, that comes back to the trust element. So there've been times during this period where we've purposefully not sold certain elements of what we're doing digitally because we couldn't guarantee the return. Uh, it might have been a great return, but it may not have been. And until we could guarantee that, we didn't want to break the trust that we had with our supplier community. And so, again, I think it's just about being true to your core values right the way through, even when sometimes it's challenging or tempting to do otherwise. 
Absolutely. I, I, that makes perfect sense. And, and I think, you know, that's, it's, it is interesting. I think as a team at IMEX and um, saying no is quite difficult for us sometimes. Um, but I have been really impressed with how we've sort of changed the way we work almost this year to be really project-based and we get input from every team on any big decision that we're making. Um, and I think that's made a big difference to how we've moved forward with these new projects, um, kind of to make sure that everybody in the team is really involved. And I'm actually really excited to see how we're able to pivot back to live in that sense because I do think it's changed the way that we work as a company yeah I agree you know we've always had a lot going on at IMX because we've always had a lot of ideas and we've always wanted to implement new innovations at every single show that we've done but that also means that there's a lot going on it's sometimes been difficult for people to know people in the business even to know what's going on this period has taught us how to do that better we're not perfect but we certainly have better ways to communicate and collaborate, which is interesting because we've obviously had to learn a new way of working by not being in the office. And actually that break has forced us to think about how we're collaborating and how we're working together. So it's been really interesting from that perspective. Absolutely. And finally, on that note, Karina, what piece of advice has helped you lead the IMAX team to not just survive this year, but to really thrive and continue to build back better? Um, I don't think there's been a single piece of advice, except I'd always say sort of learning from your mistakes, which is a piece of advice I've had, you know, since a child uh, has definitely been very useful over the past period. I think we have thrived and continue to build back better this year because we have kept looking forward. We've never wallowed in looking backwards. We've never regretted. We've never said, if only this hadn't happened to us. We've always looked forward really positively, optimistically, confidently, and aimed to sort of control the controllables, look at what was around us. What can we do to improve the situation for us and our clients? And I think that's given us confidence and it's given us excitement as well we've allowed ourselves to experiment and try new things and we've sort of quite bravely at some points put ourselves out there and said we're trying this come on the journey with us we'll we'll tell you if it works or not and I think that's allowed us to be optimistic and keep looking forward I think that is the thing that if I look back has helped us uh, the most over this period I couldn't agree more so thank you for that. And um, thank you, Karina, obviously, as always, for joining me in our conversations with Karina. And thank you, Richard and Mark, for joining us as well. Thank you for your great insights. And we are on the road to purposeful recovery, and we can't wait to continue to share these learnings with all of you. So we will see you online on the IMAX Buzz Hub and in person at IMAX America this November. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.